Hey, welcome to Dan's Model Works, and we're back at the Clutter Zone, and we're working on this, Italy's U.S. Wrecker Truck. This is part two of this series, and as we left off last time, move this out of the way, I've mocked up the cab and the bed, and as you can see, there's a gap here. Italy would have you build it like this. And as I discussed in part one, the, the actual truck portion of this model appears to be awesome. It's fantastic. The wrecker part, uh, I've got a few problems with. I'm not sure how accurate it is. As well as that, I'm not sure if it how closely it represents North American practice. Certainly, American or North American wrecker trucks are a lot longer. So... I'm going to be stretching this by at least an inch and a quarter, possibly an inch and a half. And I'll be extending the record body forward. And hopefully I'll be posting a video with some pictures of some real record trucks so we can build the back part more accurately. But our first ta task is going to be to lengthen the frame rails. So I've got my frame rails separated from the sprue and cleaned up. As well as that, you're supposed to remove the very, very tail of the frame. And basically, it's a part that slopes down. And of course, that is forms part of the ramp that would go under a trailer. So that's been removed. Now, the decision is, is where we're going to cut it. Now, there are three cross members that go in this area. And then there's more cross members up here. And this device here is goes on to the rear suspension so there happens to be this little line molded into the frame on both both sides i think you can see it right there and that's right in the area that i'm thinking of cutting it so you know what i'm going to take the easy way out i'm going to cut right on that line and i'm going to be using a razor saw to do it Ah, uh, the carnage has begun. So having done the one and a half inch stretch with a piece of styrene to stretch it, I've set the frame rails down on a flat surface so they can dry straight. So you can see our frame rails have been stretched by an inch and a half. And the next step will be to put some angle styrene on here. And then just basically pack it out to the final size however since i did the stretch i had been over to raw services and that video was already up on youtube to take some pictures of some of the uh, class 8 records that they have there and having seen those trucks i think we've got to stretch even more now i'm not going to make this truck quite as long as the ones they have there mainly because this truck is not going to have a lift axle so I think I'm going to end up making the total stretch, I'd say, about two inches as opposed to the inch and a half that I've already got it. And this shouldn't be a big problem because if I cut my splice plate and then put these angles on top and bottom, I should end up with the same amount of strength as I was going to have anyway. So that'll be my next little bit of construction here is going to be chopping this and putting on these angles and they'll be cut to the final two inches that we want to stretch it. So there's our stretch right there. I'll take a piece of styrene to fill in this gap and then I'm going to putty. So I still have a little bit of sanding to do here on my splice, but I can still work on putting the two halves of the frame together. And this is old school in that they give you all the different cross pieces and things like that to glue together. So let's get this thing together.
So here's our frame mostly assembled. And don't panic if you thought I was rushing things with that time lapse. Most of the parts I had cleaned up and prepared before turning on the camera for each shot. And I didn't show the putting of the steering front wheels on here because that was kind of fiddly. So normally I don't get excited about a kit that says molded in three or four colors, but Italeri have really done us a favor by molding the frame in a black like this. Because normally with a truck frame like this, if you decided to spray paint the whole thing, you'd find that all the little nooks and crannies that you'd have a hard time getting good coverage in those spots and you'd have to probably touch that up with a paintbrush anyway. Whereas if you just said, ah, screw the airbrush or the spray can and brush painted the whole thing, you'd end up with, you know, areas where, you know, it, the, the smoothness of the finish was not all of it should have been. However, because this is already pre-painted, or I should say pre-molded in black, I can hang this up in my spray booth, paint it a nice semi-gloss black, and any areas that the coverage is not 100%, it's not going to not going to be noticeable because plastic is already black. Then I'm going to come back later and like this this part here, I'll probably end up painting it uh, more of a flat dark gray so it represents plastic. And there's a few other parts I'll touch up later with some detail painting. So that's the next step for this is this guy go to the spray booth. So here is our engine all assembled up, and it went to went together quite well. Uh, very nicely detailed engine. However, it presents me with a conundrum, and that is, what color am I going to paint this engine? Now, as I mentioned in part one, I've already built this kit years ago in its Ravel Germany guys, and in in that incarnation, they basically said it was a Caterpillar engine paint it yellow, and that's what I did. Now, when I got to the instructions on this kit, it says paint it dark gray, which for a Caterpillar engine would be wrong. So I did a little bit of research on the Infernal Net and uh, these a Ford LTL 9000 came standard with a Cummins NH230 engine and the optional engine was a Caterpillar 3406. And so I've done quite a bit of searching for photos of both kinds of engines and quite literally they look very, very similar. And given that a lot of the accessory bits on the sides change depending on the application, it's difficult to know even based on that. So what am I going to do? You know, I'm a little bit distrustful of the Italeri instructions because after all, they won't even admit that this kit is a Ford. So it's quite possible that they decided that to go with just, just painted some dark engine -y color just to, just to avoid copyright problems. So here's one more reason to paint a Caterpillar yellow. I have a can of old Caterpillar yellow paint I think that is the final nail casting my vote in terms of going with it being a Caterpillar engine. So that's what I'm going to do. So here's our engine fresh from the paint booth. And I think I will be painting the transmission. Oh, I'm thinking probably a dark gray. I'm going to leave the engine, of course, Caterpillar yellow. Although I'm just waiting for somebody to crawl out of the woodwork and say, I was a heavy diesel mechanic for 25 years, and that's definitely a Cummins. So, although no matter what, I'm going to leave it Caterpillar yellow. It looks very much like a lot of the Cat uh, 3406s that I saw in pictures, so I'm going to leave it at that. In terms of detailing, I'm going to paint the belts flat black and a couple of the fittings. I'll try to pick out in some other colors, but mostly a Caterpillar engine when you see it. Having been rebuilt, it's just a big, huge blob of yellow. Now, I did putty the uh, the oil pan here because there was a seam running down the middle of that. 
I'm not going to worry too much about this seam up here because the cab is going to be sitting over top of that. That's pretty much all I got to say about the engine. It does look really nice. Like I said, once I pick out the, uh, the belts and maybe give it a, a wash, I think it should look quite nice. Now, while I painted the engine, I also painted the fan shroud. Not because I wanted to make the fan shroud yellow, I, I don't, but because the fan itself is molded intricately with it. So I'm going to come back with a flat black because the fan shroud itself probably would have been a plastic. So that's going to be flat black. And then the radiator itself is going to be painted a glossy or a semi-gloss black. So next time you see this part, this area will all be black, hopefully with the fan itself remaining a nice yellow. And when it mounts in the truck, basically it does this. So this is a case where your radiator really does have to fit exactly. You can't bodge it because that fan is mounted inside the shroud. So here's our engine belts all painted up in flat black. And uh, Italeri calls for this hose to be painted a slightly different color, like uh, other than the engine block color. I ended up going with uh, dark blue for the transmission. Now I went on to uh, a, uh, a chat board uh, for modelers building trucks. And the consensus seemed to be you could paint your transmission pretty much any color you wanted. Mainly because most truck manufacturers, when they install them, they ended up painting them black or painting them to match the frames. So if it had ever been rebuilt or anything like that, generally it was painted a different color by the rebuilder or whatever. So I just kind of went off on a limb and said, oh, dark blue looks good. And that'll give me a little bit of color, um, you know, to relieve the overall black of the frame. So here's our frame, all nice and jet blacked up. Now these parts here, I'm going to end up painting them kind of a, a dirt gray, just to illustrate that they're a different material than the rest of the frame. Something else that I took the opportunity to paint yellow the same time I painted the engine and the fan were the shock absorbers. And why, why you may ask? Because Monroe, I know there's got to be at least, oh, 12, 15 different shock absorber manufacturers in the world. But when you ask somebody, you know, what color is a shock absorber? Odds are, if they're going to pick a color, it's going to be yellow. Why? Because Monroe shocks and struts and things like that. So who am I to fight that? I, I admit, to me, shock absorbers should be yellow, even though I know damn well that they're they're gray, red, blue, all different colors. The nice thing about yellow is, is it'll stand out against the, the black of the truck. So that's why these ended up being yellow. The shock absorbers have been mounted and the hardware has been touched up with a silver marker. And if we flip it over, the parts that actually attach to the axles, they've been touched up with black paint and the shock absorber installation on the front. I have no idea why one is on the inside of the frame, one's on the outside of the frame. That's what the instructions call for. There's probably some uh, geometrical reason having to do with ride control and, you know, steering geometry and things like that. But anyway, one goes on the outside, one goes on the inside. And here's our radiator assembly all done. And any parts that would be metal, I painted semi-gloss black. This shroud area at the back, like I said before, that's been painted flat black. Just leaving the fan itself yellow. One thing it is a bit of a disappointment, and I think you can probably see it at this angle, is that Italeri kind of kind of got lazy and didn't put any uh, radiator detail on the inside. I don't think it's going to be that noticeable. And let's face it, I mean, it's only when you've got the hood up that you can see it. I mean, certainly the front is, is well molded, but you can see there's no actual detail inside there. So anyway, there's our 
There's our fan assembly and radiator assembly ready for mounting. The engine isn't ready to be mounted in permanently yet, but I've just mocked it up in here. Basically it's sitting on the engine mounting cradles at the back and it's engaging with the fan and the radiator at the front, which hasn't been glued in either. But it is nice to look at it and say, oh, I'm making some progress. And of course, here's our rear end and you can see the the airbags have been painted, uh, you know, my favorite rubber color, which is German gray, because you wouldn't want to actually use rubber for rubber. So anywho, let's get back to the interesting end. So that just about does it for Dan's Model Works this week. And thanks for watching, and until next time, keep on modeling.